Sure, yeah. Um, you know, we started with, um, the, the whole process was about three months of rehearsal, which was very long, and, and it, um, it begins with interviews. So before they even see the script, we learn sort of everything about one another. So for, for me and Dwight, um, who plays the father, you know, he's a baker, uh, actually. And so it, what, what I would do is I would show up at the bakery at 11 o'clock at night, and then while he's baking donuts, it'd stay there until 6 in the morning just talking about life and, and things that had happened to him. So that, that was step one. Um, and then those things get sort of written into the script, and then I bring what gets written based on those interviews into sessions where we kind of change all the, the words. So I'll say almost every line in the script, I would ask them, you know, how would you say this? And they would, they would give me their interpretation of it. And then there are also improvisations which were also transcribed um, into the film. So it becomes a very kind of intimate collaboration on the character itself, and then that gets brought um, into a script which is locked by the time we shoot. Um, no, it was always that the idea, you know, that it was going to be um, a very kind of naturalistic, realistic series of events and a very a world that was that was rooted in in reality, and that the <clears throat> and then that the kind of lyricism and the poetry would come in the way that the film was being perceived by Hush Puppy, you know, the way that she sees events, the way that she looks at the world, the way that she interprets things and uh, experiences things. Uh, you know, I try to think about what my, you know, what, what it's like to be six and sort of only have a thin grasp on that reality. And so I always wanted those two levels to be happening, you know, this sort of hard reality of the world and then, and then this much more poetic world and almost fable-like world that she lives in and, and, and a story which she almost puts on top of her, her own life. Um, that was really the question that I started with, you know, um, with, with the film, because when you go down there, you understand it immediately, but it's hard to articulate it. Um, you, you, but it seems such a, like an obvious thing, and, and where, I, where I came to with it, it it's almost like asking um, <clears throat> a kid, you know, who has a you know, a difficult father, you know, why do you stay with your father? You know, asking a six-year-old, you should go find a different father, and they would look at you and say, I mean, no kid would ever do that, and, and, and that's how it is down there. It's, the land is, uh, is so much a part of life, you know, the, the, you know, there's this direct attachment to nature, you know, the, the, the cuisine that's so much part of the culture is coming directly out of the water, you stand on the dock and someone pulls up the shrimp, they dump it out, you put it right in the pot, you eat it, that's the celebration where people come together and there's nowhere else, uh, there's nowhere else in the world where uh, that happens. And, and, and also, you know, the culture is completely different from the rest of America. You know, it's, uh, it's a, you know, the, the language is a, is, a, is a mixture of French and English. The, the, to the traditions there are, are totally uh, foreign. So you couldn't take this place and put it in St. Louis, it would die, you know, and, and they talk about that, um, people say, we're made by the marsh, we're like a marsh plant here, and if you were to, there's so many things that only grow in this region, if you were to take it and plant it somewhere else, you just watch that plant wither and die, and so, even though it's, it's life-threatening to live there sometimes, it's just as life-threatening to, to go somewhere else, and, and that's something that we wanted to get at in the film, for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's both things, you know, I think the, and the film was trying to, as far as the, the attitude toward nature goes, you know, it, it's, Hush Puppy goes on a journey as far as her relationship with nature goes, and she starts in the film um, feeling that she is a morsel of food. You know, the teacher is talking about meat, and like she's this little morsel of meat that's there to be consumed by a larger animal. And the and the, the journey of the film is really um, about coming to a to a kind of uh, a peace with that, and, and, and becoming uh, strong enough to kind of stand up to that, and, and, and gaining a kind of enlightenment about um, your place in the planet, which doesn't negate that, which doesn't negate the hostility and the violence of nature, but but sort of understands that it's uh, that there's something beautiful and elegant um, in, in the when when you step back away from the from the sort of violence of of, uh, of individual moments and you look at the cycles of nature and you look at the way that you know a body transforms into fire transforms into smoke becomes the air you know Huxley's final moment is really about um, understanding that this this large universe that she's a piece of you know so that's that's what she's talking about and so I think that you know um, 
you know, I think the people in the bathroom, especially when they're looking at that factory, you know, I think that one reaction to feeling that nature is violent is to create a bubble where nature doesn't penetrate and to move into an apartment and, and to have no plants there and to, and, to, and to cut yourself off from it. But the people in the bathtub uh, are so dependent on it and, and they're so, their lives are so uh, connected to the ground, like I was talking about, that uh, her mission is really to, to gain a peace with this violence of nature. It's a, it's a it's a battle there, you know. It's um because of, because of what's happening with the land, you know. You it's you. There's an amazing uh, change in the generations. You know, the the grandparents uh, on the island where I shot speak only French. Their children speak French and English. Their children speak only English. So the grandparents and the children in some families can't speak to one another. Um, and but but they're so. And, and the place is disappearing so fast, and this is part of what the film is trying to get at. You know, one day it will, it will be like a story where people say once there was this place called South Louisiana, and it will just be water. You know, and the only place that that will exist is in stories and in the children now passing on. Um, you know, the traditions and the culture of this place. Um, so it, it's it's essential, and it, and it, and I think that there. Are, there is a very conscious sense of that in, in the communities that uh, the place is endangered and that, and that the traditions need to be passed on and you feel the kind of uh, immediacy and the strength of culture there in, in a way that's much more tangible than almost anywhere, I mean, not almost, literally anywhere else in, in America. It's the place where I, I go and I feel like this this place's culture is uh, is everything to the community and, and they're going to fight to preserve it, you know, um, at all costs. And so I think the parents are very conscious of uh, teaching their children both both the traditions of the place and also as hush puppy, as Wink does the hush puppy just to be strong enough to live there to be to be fearless and to be resilient um, those qualities are, are ones that you absolutely have to have in order to uh, survive in South Louisiana. Il y a un changement euh, qui, est, qui est très très clair en, en Louisiane du Sud euh, depuis les événements qu'on sait mais, mais de toute façon euh, parce que euh, parce qu'encore une fois l'endroit que l'on appelle Louisiane du Sud, le sud de Louisiane, est en train réellement de disparaître concrètement. Il est en train de s'effacer petit à petit, et encore une fois, inexorablement. Et puis il y a, il y a beaucoup de choses qui changent. Par exemple, les, les grands-parents, actuellement, en Louisiane du Sud, les grands-parents ne parlent que français. Et puis leurs enfants parlent français et anglais. Et les enfants de leurs enfants ne parlent que anglais. Donc par exemple, dans une même famille, à deux générations de différence, on ne se comprend plus du tout. Ils ne parlent plus la même langue. Donc il y a un vrai problème, et puis encore une fois, donc, cet, cet endroit disparaît, donc quelque part, la Louisiane du Sud, un jour, ça va devenir euh, une histoire ancienne euh, qu'on ne pourra plus communiquer qu'en voilà, qu parlant, parce que ça aura complètement disparu, la terre et tout ce qui est autour, euh, les habitudes, les, le langage, que sais-je, euh, tout cela est en train de disparaître, et c'est essentiel, cette prise de conscience qu'il y a en ce moment en Louisiane du Sud est essentielle, euh, nous dit-il, parce qu'ils parce qu essayent, tout, tous les habitants sur place essayent de, de trouver le, le meilleur moyen de continuer à, à perpétuer une tradition, etc., un, un mode de vie, euh, et beaucoup de choses finalement, et, et c'est quelque chose d'assez compliqué, parce que la communication n'est pas, euh, euh, pas toujours optimale. Euh, donc voilà, et c est, c est ce passage de l'histoire, de la culture, de beaucoup de choses, eh c'est quelque chose, cette transmission, c'est quelque chose qui est présent à l'esprit de beaucoup de gens, et, tout, et tous les parents en Louisiane du Sud en ce moment, eh bien, ils essayent de, vraiment de se, de se concentrer pour pouvoir communiquer tout cet aspect culture, etc., et également apprendre à leurs enfants à être euh, suffisamment forts, pour vivre dans ces régions-là et pour, pour perpétuer, entre guillemets, la tradition. Encore une question. Les rapports avec ah, l'aide humanitaire. What is the. Can you talk to us about the help that these people receive from uh, communities you know, around the world after the disaster? What is the relationship they have? Uh, because it, it seems like it's complicated. It's like the least. Yeah. Um. It's, it's very different in different scenarios, in different places even, you know, the, um, yeah, you know, so it's, it's sort of very internal Louisiana issues. So New Orleans is what is one thing, which was very sort of public, what happened in Katrina and sort of these urban evacuations that are, uh, you know, that were disastrous in 2005, um, you know, and, and, you know, in the cities, it's, it's, it's different because if, during a storm, if you can't get out, you know, uh, like if you if you don't get out in time, it's almost impossible to get out. There's only a few roads out of the city. A lot of people in the city don't have cars, and they need help in order to get to safety. Which in 2005 was a was a disaster, and, and it was completely 
uh, botched by the you know the government on many levels and, and caused a lot of the you know the, tra the tragedies that happened around 2005. In the rural rural communities, it's, it's a much different issue. Um, in a lot of ways, which is more depicted in the film, the, the most difficult thing is the aftermath because what happens is people get out of their homes and then they can't get back home because the water comes in and the, and the way that the levees work down there, the water gets trapped inside of these towns and uh, then they get blockaded and can't get back to their homes and things rot in the water and, and things are destroyed and uh, you know it, it damages the land in irreparable ways. So um, I don't know if that's a clear answer, but there's sort of very complicated relationship and uh, there's a lot of mistrust of um, government in general, I would say, uh, in Louisiana because of how poorly uh, the region has been treated by, by, the, by the outside world. And so people are very uh, proud of being self-reliant and able to take care of themselves. And, and in these disasters in the rural areas, a lot of times you don't hear about them because no one will complain, no one will ask for help. It's all about neighbors helping each other and, and everybody kind of picking themselves back up.